What if I told you, you can fine tune every aspect of your flywheeler blaster from the pusher voltages to flywheel speed to the amount of stall current pre flywheel spin up time just about anything that's electronically motivated on a blaster you can be in full control of guess what such mod does exist today we're gonna discuss it let's get into it This is the JS Black Tech Evolver Kit. It consists of four major components. This is the HUD module. In here is the trigger pack. Right over here is the pusher pack. And then slightly forward right over here is the driver pack. This is a four way control system. You're in full control of monitoring your dart capacity, the sensitivity of your main trigger and your rev trigger, full control over the optics. We're going to get into all these details in more precision, but first let's talk about the blaster. I don't know if you guys remember not too long ago, I would say later this spring, I actually thrifted this blaster. Oh my freaking God. I can't believe it. A freaking straddle hawk. I've been looking for this till the ends of the earth. I've finally had one it is the only straddle hawk i've ever found it was in less than desirable condition if we're gonna be honest it was pretty rough the motors were rusted over and seized this blaster definitely needed some tlc but the most important takeaway from that i did not find it with the scope it kind of left an empty canvas here for improvement as i was just starting to dig in to my straddle hawk i get an email from a company named nf strike asking me if I would like to join their collaboration program and review one of their hottest products. I looked into what they were offering and this was right up my alley. You guys know I like technology. You guys know I like dipping my hands in all kinds of electrical stuff. I did not think twice. I said, bring it on. Once I received the product, I did notice the main plastic housings on both the HUD and the internal parts was red. Even the triggers were red. Now this doesn't really go along with either the rapid strike or the straddle hawk in color matching. So I asked them something that I don't know if anybody has before. You guys know I took ownership of a Bamboo Labs P1S printer recently. So I asked them, hey, do you guys happen to have the STL files for all this equipment? Because I would like to print it in a color pattern that matches my straddle hawk. And they said, actually, we do. We got the files and I did some interesting combination of white, gray, and orange rather than just making it one color. Why not? The straddle hawk is not one color. It has a various amount of colors in it. So we went ahead and printed it to the colors to match. We installed everything, but we're gonna take it all way back. And I'm gonna tell you about everything that happened once I received this kit. Let's get into it. So before we get into the installation, I do have to cover something that happened, but if anything, it only showcases what a stand-up company NF Strike is and how great their customer service is. When I first got this kit, the tolerance between this little knob that fits over the switch here, since I had to swap it, it was a very tight tolerance and the little knob of the switch broke. Now this is no ordinary switch. This is what's referred to as a six pin coated switch. This switch is a very intricate. It goes with the coating on the Arduino chip that's inside this board and requires a specific soldering technique in order to not only remove it, but install it. I contacted an F-Strike for the specs on the switch while I did my own research in looking for said switches in order to replace them. Luckily, I found a bunch of them. I had to buy like 16 of them at a time, but it was okay. It was only like 10 bucks for all 16. Successfully repaired the switch, was able to get it in, and that's why you didn't see this review a week earlier. Thank you, NF Strike, for helping out with all the specs and the patience, waiting for me to repair this unit in order for me to get this review out. But I guarantee you guys, it was totally worth the wait. So now we're gonna get into the assembly. Let's get into it. All right, guys, first order of business. I have a long standing bone to pick with this Straddle Hawk. When I picked up this blaster, if you don't remember, I think it was Blaster Bargains episode 15 or 16, one of those maybe even 17. I'll put it here in the corner if you want to check that episode out. All these Blaster Bargains episodes are really fun to check out if you like nerf thrifting videos. This blaster was in really rough shape. The motors were rusted shut. I actually had to open them up. It was pretty gruesome. Had to completely gut the motors. It never really performed the way it should have anyway, even at factory standards. So we're going to go ahead and do a horsepower upgrade to this blaster. We got a set of Worker 132s. You heard me praise these motors for how awesome they are. They're like basically 180, 130 hybrids. They got the body of the 180 internals of the 130 so you got all the rpm the torque of a 180 got a couple of little extra goodies we're going to dress up our straddle hawk with once she's done with all these tech upgrades grip heels by tungsten exe awesome nerf modding channel check it out when you can 40 millimeter crush cage by a hale kelly also known as adrian kelly 
You can download these files from, I believe, Printables and Thingiverse. I think I got these from Thingiverse. Awesome cages. I love the geometry of these. Motor cover, also by Adrian Kelly. The reason we need this is because we do need to cut the shell to allow these 180 motors to fit properly. And this motor cover is gonna make sure, aesthetically, the blaster still looks decent after you have to pretty much cut it open we have a barrel cover by lone wolf 052 i thought this was a really cool design you basically attach it just like any end strike attachment it's a really tight fit i love the corrugated look here on the barrel adds a very clean look to the end of the blaster and last but not least the man himself flagonial the creator of the griffin blaster made this amazing little extended flared magwell which fits beautifully onto the bottom of the blaster here gives it a great little aesthetic futuristic style we'll be running the original stratahawk drum magazine on this so this is going to look really nice as it flares into the bigger drum from the regular magazine without further ado guys let's cut this baby open let's put these motors in and then we can get to all the techie stuff let's get into it all right guys we got our new motors soldered in we got some worker smooth flywheels also in place now on this new cage we have set in the new wire run which also has the circuit board or one of the circuit boards behind it it replaces the old wire run and it goes here the new pusher assembly goes right here in the same location as the factory with these little dowels fit into their recesses and of course the new trigger pack fits into these recesses and naturally all these parts are direct fit the kit even has direct leads that go directly to your motors and it brings its own XT60 lead so you can run it in your battery tray. We're going to mount our hollow sight now. It connects with this little ribbon cable. We're going to put our blaster back together. We're going to do some test runs and check out the features. Let's get it, guys. All right, guys, just a quick glance before we seal her back up. Basically showing you a general idea of how these things go mounted. The trigger pack comes together with the trigger itself and the rev trigger. This is all one pack. Now, I've seen several iterations of the Evolver. I've seen ones where the pusher motor is actually sitting vertically looks like they've evolved the evolver no pun intended to a horizontal position to push your motor and then the gear itself is the one that angles the mechanism in a vertical position to power the pusher that's one of the major changes i've noticed i've also noticed the previous iterations had this and this piece all together the pusher is now modular it already comes set up for long darts but it does include a little piece which allows you to adapt for a short dart configuration I decided to leave this blaster in its original long dart form because I want to use those Nerf drum mags. Sight slides in here and it connects with this flat ribbon cable. Make sure to tuck all your wires away. Now there is an infrared or a magnetic sensor in here that senses when there's a dart in the chamber kind of mimicking what the actual mechanical switches do on a stock nerf blaster instead it helps the arduino module here count the amount of darts that you have how many you have left and making sure that you actually have a dart in the chamber i think we're done with the interior of the blaster guys it's time to put her back together and give it a test let's get it guys There are four main menus on this thing, ranging from the basic controls all the way to the more advanced controls. The way you enter those menus is the amount of clicks on this knob here. To adjust the values on said menus, you're gonna click the knob once on your selection, and then you're going to turn the knob to select your desired value. Two clicks gets you into the main menu. Basic adjustments menu, you have your pusher voltage, which is directly going to impact your rate of fire. Sound switches, normal off and game on is what the manual recommends. You have your display darts on. You always want to keep that on so you can actively display the amount of darts that you have remaining in your mag. This blaster does have a sensor that senses the darts, so you'll be able to have an accurate count on that. I have my magazine capacity set to 25 for the original Stratohawk 25 round drum, but you can set it to whatever mag capacity your standard mag has minimum voltage 9.5 you should probably lower that to about 7 volts if you're working with a 2s lipo here is where we get into a little bit more of things you're going to be working with on the field so the number of darts you fire on mode 2 is most always going to be three darts for your three shot burst the full auto selection doesn't have an adjustment because that's obviously naturally going to be full auto all the time and for mode one you want to always keep that at single fire so that you are able to fire off single darts with the single press 
of a trigger. Stock dart step is an adjustment that I personally don't mess with. And then you have a pre-accessory speed of 20%. I think default is 15. This is basically wheel pre-spin up. It's made to prolong motor life. Wheel speed is always at 100. And that's it for your basic menu. You're gonna change your display mode. You always wanna keep that on HUD mode. So here you can adjust a variety of sensors, sensor delays. I really don't mess with most of that stuff. Roll offset and pitch offset basically are two sensors that are directly tied to the direction of your blaster, kind of like a gyroscope. Auto power off, that can come in handy if you forget to turn off your blaster often. Empty sensor delay refers to how fast the blaster alerts you when you're empty after you fire the last darts. These are very, very intricate surgical adjustments that you'll never have to mess with. You double click the right hand side knob twice in order to save the parameters and go back into the original menu. If you click the wheel four times, then you come into the UI select screen, which is user interface. It's basically three Three modes that are built into this. I'm pretty sure you can download more off the internet. There is an SD card on this Arduino chip that allows you to import different firmwares or versions of the software, maybe different UIs as well. I personally like going with the current one, which has this honeycomb at the bottom and the darts at the right with the battery on the right. But you can also opt for this cool sci-fi looking one here. Now these all have their own kind of style and personality. They all display their batteries and their darts in different areas. As you can see here with this blue UI select screen, it has the battery in a hexagon little cell, along with the dart mode that you're gonna fire on the bottom right, showing three shot burst. Turning off is fairly simple. Mind you, you do have to have the shot selector on safety. Just hold the trigger down for about five seconds and the entire unit will be shut off, meaning you can't press anything with the blaster responding. All in all, I am very, very pleased with this mod. It is extremely cutting edge. It is extremely state of the art. I personally have never seen anything like this before. I'm pretty sure the 3D print community has produced different versions of Arduino controlled blasters, select fire and whatnot, but this level of intricate manipulation over the parameters on your blaster is something unprecedented that I've never seen before. So props to JS for coming up with this product and putting it on the market. It allows a lot of people that perhaps don't have the engineering skill or the resources to design these systems from scratch. There's something on the shelf that you could just simply order and receive it right now. I believe there is a sale going on right now at NF Strike for this model. They have like 10% off or something. I honestly recommend that if you're heavily into high powered modded blasters and you wanna have the maximum amount of control over the systems on your blaster, I highly recommend this kit. Really happy with the Stratohawk. This is actually my first modded Rapid Strike platform. I've put cages and whatnot before, but this thing is fully modded along with this kit. So you guys should definitely check it out. I highly recommend it. If you like mod videos like this, I do them every once in a while in between our reviews and our other covered topics. If you enjoyed this video, you're definitely gonna like this one. I'll catch you on the next one. Stay blasting, foam fam. <laughs>